Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at Sunshine Showdown. Check in 615688. It's Genesis, another one of these awesome uh, piston mech bots that we've been seeing that have been just scoring super, super fast throughout the competition. This team's going to be talking about why they chose to rebuild into this format as well, but a couple other cool things with their uh, fold-out wings, the way that their uh, arm mechanism goes up. We'll be talking more about that. Uh, a little bit more on their drivetrain as well. Some other great features will be diving into this robot. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Ethan, lots to dive in on this robot here. When we were talking earlier, drivetrain's been a huge key to success so far. Talk to me more about what's gone into it. So for our drivetrain, we really focused on uh, speed as well as still maintaining our torque. So to do that, we put 77 watts onto our drivetrain. And to make sure that we could maintain that speed during autonomous, we decided to go with traction wheels. We have one Odon pod here just so that we can, uh, because we don't need a horizontal one to work with the traction and we are really able to accelerate and change directions well because of our low seat center of gravity. So when you go 77 watts on a drive train, where are you taking away from on other parts of your robot to make 77 watts happen? So to take uh, the wattage, uh, uh, to take the wattage and put into our drive train, we really decided that we wanted to take it away from our scoring mech since we also want to focus on speed there. So what you'll see with most um, scoring is that you'll have a separate motor for the scoring, but we decided if we could piston power it, we could free up one whole 11 watt for our drivetrain. Um, and that really helps um, just make sure that we can have enough torque um, while maintaining that speed. Um, but we do this just so that we can also have a lot of power. So our, our scoring mech is one of the strongest and fastest just because we have three pneumatic pistons on there. Um, that's, yeah. So, oh, is okay, so. Raise it, okay, and then. <laughs> a lot of power there that comes through, yeah. yeah. So with this, we're actually able to score in about 0.4 seconds. We were able to score six blocks in 0.4 seconds. And with that, we also can de-score the control zone. So in one of our matches we saw, we had uh, the opponent had the full control zone, but we had six blocks loaded up and we launched it and we were able to take complete control zone and de-score one of their blocks. Um, so this really just helps us get the last minute plays where we can just de-score their blocks at the same time we score them. So we don't have to worry about hooks during that time. Can we see those come through one more time? I think that was really cool. Let's show that off again. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, so. Ooh. All right, so with there being so much force in that, how are you guys approaching like scoring on mid goals, that sort of thing, in order to make sure you're not pushing them out too far? Um, so to do that, we actually have a two solenoids controlling our pistons. So for one of our pistons, we have connected to a different solenoid. Um, so this allows us to have three different speed settings. That way for the middle goal, we can score a little bit lighter. Um, and we have one piston on a flow regulator and that allows us to score um, just slowly onto the middle goal. So if we, yeah. All right, much more, much more calm and controlled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really cool in there. And then uh, how does your match loader work? Can we dive a little more into that? Uh, yeah, so for our match loader, um, we really focus on giving it a lot of room of air. Since we notice a lot of times in Auton and match play, um, a lot of the errors came from missing the match loader. So to prevent this, we actually just added these um, half cuts on the bottom. And so when we put it down, this aligns to the base of the goal so that we can pr prevent us from getting, uh, from um, missing the part here so that we can always get in the center. Um, this makes our match loading extremely consistent um, and allows us to um, have a lot more consistent auton and driver. Now, looking into your performance here at Sunshine Showdown, obviously great competition that we've seen uh, amongst all these awesome teams. Is there anything that would be a key improvement for you that you think looking into future matches or future competitions? One of our key improvements for our robot that um, we're looking to actually fix is our flip-out hook. Um, while we do have um, several interesting methods of doing this, for example, when we, push, when we put our lift up, it's actually completely passive and linked to our lift through this string pulley system. 
that wraps around this standoff all the way on under here to our hook over here and when we pull up it releases the string allowing a band to pull our um, hook up however this is very wobbly and um, this is not necessarily good for match play so what we do is when we lower it um, it slots into our polycarp and cannot move and then uh, Jonathan is there any anything else on in regards to plastic on your robot that you want to highlight at all uh, yes um, for our aligner um, this is actually very important for our hook play because while many people have very long hooks and um, can make these crazy descoring plays, many people actually struggle to hit those just because they tend to overshoot the goal. So our goal with this aligner here was to make sure our driver physically cannot overshoot the goal and will always place it in at the correct um, spot in order to descore. Let's wrap up this robot here, uh, Ethan. Can we talk a little bit more about some of your mat strategy and just what's gone into that? And then, uh, you know, once again, great competitions we've seen here so far. Is anything going to mo be modified or changed for future events for you? So going into this competition, uh, we really wanted to play as a very aggressive bot following other bots around and just like making sure that we could get good wing play while also scoring balls really fast and getting those control zones. So our, our match strategy has really been focused on being able to lose opponents under the bar or going around and scoring very quickly before moving on to the next objective and using our wings to make sure that even if we don't score it directly into the control zone, we can wing it into the control zone or take our opponent's blocks and de-score them since we're confident that we can just score directly in the control zone without having to wing. We want to, because of our bot having bad alignment to the middle goal, we really focused on scoring on the low goal because of how fast our intake is. It runs at 1800 RPM, so we can outtake and completely descore the low goal control zone and immediately get it back using the one ball that we scored. And then we've also just been focusing on using our speed and trying to win Auton so that we can play an easy strategy of just getting the high goal and then one low goal and calling it a game there. For improvements, I think we want to focus a little bit more on making our wing a little bit more consistent, even though the flip out is very, very cool. Um, and then we will definitely just want to focus on improving our Auton and driving a little bit more, but the bot design we think is solid. The meta of this game has really evolved into, we've seen a lot of just very low scoring matches, right? And it's almost just been about placing one block and then wing defense, that sort of thing. Do you think uh, that this piston type is the kind of that future solution to getting back into like higher scoring, more volume matches? I think it actually does the opposite. It sure. really caters towards a lower scoring game because with our low capacity of just six balls, we really don't have the capabilities to do a high scoring game. But what we can do really well is we can take our balls and immediately put them in the control zone without having to pivot around and play wing play. So from there, we always can guarantee that we have a ball in the control zone and then we can focus on wing play. And then we also, uh, with both of our middle goal and our low goal uh, scoring mechanisms, we actually just descore all the balls there and leave just our ball behind. So we really, really focus on the starvation strategy and getting as little uh, points scored as possible, but scoring them hard and fast. Yeah, absolutely. Genesis, thank you so much for uh, telling us more about this. Great machine. I can't wait to see future evolutions of this too. I think uh, this is a awesome way to approach pushback and a lot of great things that teams can learn for it. Wicked fast scoring system too. Congratulations to you all and thanks for being on Pits and Parts. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.